All right, we're starting chapter 2.2. Uh, chapter 2.2 um, has a lot of uh, these five concepts in it. Uh, they're kind of spread out, so I thought I'd make a bulleted list of them all in the same place. And the question is, how do these five concepts relate to each other? So take a sec to think about that and think about what word might go here. So um, if, uh, if f of t is a position, then its derivative is velocity. So by analogy, if f of t is velocity, what's the rate of change of velocity? The word for that is acceleration. And how do these concepts all relate to each other? They're all basically the same idea. Of course, velocity and acceleration aren't the same, but the idea of taking a derivative of something and getting the rate of change of it is, is part of this whole idea. Um, so these are all basically the same concept, which is why they're all in chapter 2.2 together. So it's all about rate of change. So it's good to be able to think of those all kind of fluidly moving from one to the other. Another big topic in um, chapter 2.2 is what are the units of f prime? So uh, here's an example for us to think about that's not position and velocity and acceleration. Um, so let's say we've been tracking how much intravenous fluid a patient has been getting um, and marking it on a chart. So here at time four, they had gotten just less than 0.5. Um, here at time 14, they had gotten just less than three, uh, et cetera. So if we want to graph the rate of change, how fast are they getting intravenous fluid at any point in time? Um, so I've got a, a blank graph laid out to do that here. And take a sec to think about how that graph is going to look and what the units on the axes are going to be. Okay, maybe you want to pause the video, sketch it out yourself before you watch me sketch it. So your brain is primed to absorb any information that it uh, needs updating on. Okay, all right, welcome back from pausing. So let's look at the first segment here. It went from zero to just less than 0.5 in four hours. So what's the slope there? It would be, let's call that uh, 0 0.4 minus zero divided by four minus zero. And what are the units here? It's 0.4 liters. Uh, we said up here um, that this is in liters. And hours in the bottom. So this, the units of the slope are liters per hour. And that's the slope, not just here, but also here and here and here and here and here. So we can draw something uh, what does that work out to be? One tenth. So it's one tenth up to hour four. So I'm drawing the derivative in red here. So this is just one number, but it's the same number everywhere there. So I'm plotting a value of one tenth all the way over here. And then what are the unit? What's the slope over here? Well, we could say um, overall. Uh, it looks like this is topping out just below 3, let's call it 2.9, and it starts out at 0 0.4 divided by, what is that, time 14 minus time 4, and if you do the arithmetic on that you get 0 0.25, and that's not just the slope here, that's the slope here and here and here and here and here, so we've got 0.25 all the way up to time, what was it, 14? And then the question is, what happens between here and there? Well, this is kind of tricky, and a lot of people don't agree with the standard mathematician uh, answer to it. Um, what would you say is the slope of a tangent line here? Well, the tangent line could just continue with the same slope as on the left, or it could just continue with the same slope as on the right, but it could have any slope kind of in between those. You could imagine it kind of tilting. Anything that's just going to touch that point could count as a tangent line. Um, it turns out um, the derivative, we want the value of it for positive delta x's 
and the value of it for negative delta x is to be the same for us to agree that that is the derivative. And if they aren't the same, here for positive delta x, you get that. For negative delta x, you get that. They don't agree from the left and the right, so we say the derivative is actually undefined right there at 4. So to denote that, we're going to put an open circle, and uh, we say the derivative just does not exist right there. And then the same thing happens here where you have a sharp bend again. The derivative is going to not exist. And then the derivative is going to be some constant. Um, I happen to know that I engineered the data to have the same slope as before. So this tops out at 3.5 minus the 2.9 divided by what is that 20, hour 20 minus hour 14. And that ends up being 0 0.1 again. So it's 0 0.1 for a while. And then here at time 20, now what's that slope? Well, that is a flat line right there, right? We're not giving that patient any more IV fluid. So the slope drops, the, the value of the derivative drops to 0. So that's our sketch of F prime. It has units of liters per hour because the original units on the x-axis were hours and the original units on the y-axis were liters. Um, so what's going on with this patient? Um, when we've done like forward difference quotient and backward difference quotient stuff before, uh, we saw like a parabola or something like a cosine wave. We didn't see sharp jumps like that. So um, I don't know if you know much about hospitals and getting IV fluids but I hope not. Um, they have a pump that delivers fluid at a set rate and a nurse can come in and type in a new rate to the pump. So apparently it was pumping at a certain rate for a while and then the nurse probably changed the rate and it jumped up basically instantaneously the instant you hit the go button uh, to a new rate and then the nurse must have changed the rate again back down to this and then at some point they stopped the IV. Um, so it's possible for a derivative to jump and be undefined at a point. So overall, what can we say are the units of the derivative? Here it was liters per hour, or liters per hour. And notice the y-axis here is much different than the y-axis here. And these are even in different units than that. So in theory, most of the time when we graph a derivative, we should do it on a separate y-axis from the original. It's good to have it on the same x-axis so we can match points. Like this sharp bend here goes with that jump there. Um, when we're doing just kind of abstract math with just a polynomial that doesn't have any particular context to it, we often graph them on the same uh, graph, so the same y-axis, because we aren't really concerned about units there. Uh, and that kind of saves space on the paper and lets us match points from one to the other more easily. But in general, the units of f prime are different than the units of f. And the units of f prime, we could say, are the units of y divided by the units of x. So that is one of the big lessons of chapter 2.2. There's a bunch of homework problems asking what are the units of y prime, and that's what we are thinking about.